Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of the Good Bit Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in this week. It is episode number 101. What an exciting edition we have, ladies and gents. A little bit surreal if you ask me. But we are chatting about the 2017 modern day classic from Mr. Jordan Peele. This week's episode is all about the classic Get Out. And I am joined, everybody, by someone that has been on my TV screen since I was extremely young since I was just a wee boy, um, and if you were to tell, you know, young Chris that we were going to be doing this episode, you know, 20 years in the future, I would have called you crazy, I would have never believed you, but I'm here with Teal Marchand, of course, from the legendary Keenan and Kel, Cheryl Rockmore, it is a pleasure to have you here, because I used to watch Keenan and Kel every day, it was my favourite kids show, it was Keenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, and The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, they were my three favourite kids shows. Woo-hoo! That I still love to this day. <laughs> I'll still watch them. But how are you? Thanks for coming on the show. It's it's great to have you. Oh, thanks for having me. And sorry it took me a minute to confirm. Um, no, no. But all is well. You know, I'm a little hot. I don't want to turn on the air conditioner because then it may make noise. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of hot in here. It's dedication. Um, dedication to the, the recording. It, it's I appreciate a beautiful it. day out. I usually have my windows open, but I also... Uh, live near a fire station so right. it literally may come at any time of course <laughs> because that's how it is when you're doing anything no you know? i know where are you based are you are you florida where are you based oh florida no no I just, I just i just assumed oh okay got you, got you i'm in los angeles no the show when we did keenan and cal the first two years were filmed in orlando got you on the lot of universal yeah but uh and only my my TV daughter, she was based out of Florida. Got you. But no, we're we're here. I'm in Los Angeles. Nice. Well, I'm in I'm in Glasgow in Scotland, and it's a little bit different than LA. I'm assuming. Um, yes. You're what is that like 11 a.m. there? This is nearly it's nearly it 8 p.m. Yes, yes, 11:40 exactly. Yeah. So I had to you know shut the blinds and put on a big light and stuff just to try. <laughs> you look much more radiant than me. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Well, you were just saying you were you were refurbishing your your place, and we're hoping this picture in, doesn't yeah, fall off. I'm in a fairly I'm in a fairly new place. Oh, we can't see that. I turned the iPad, so I was telling you, and I'll tell your audience. I didn't, you know, I haven't put anything on the walls. So, in order to make my backdrop a little decent, I had to scoop something over that you can probably capture in the background. But then Love next that. to me. Because when I'm on Zoom, let's see if I can turn next to me that little thing right there on the wall. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't fall off because I opened up my electrical panel just to hang it right over so I could, you know, capture some things. I had to actually do this Zoom audition um, for something really big. Yeah. And it was like a two hour, you know, almost two hour interview like this. And the only proper space I had, because there, again, no tables, hardly anything in right. here, is my kitchen counter. And <laughs> they didn't care if they had the panel. I'm like, look, it is what it is. You know, yeah. it is what it is. You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. I, I yeah, hate it is what it is. doing auditions on Zoom. Like I've had them over like, you know, the kind of COVID time. Um, yeah. And it just doesn't. It's not the same. I much yeah. prefer being in the room. I can't tell you the last time like there was an actual audition where you went in and you met the panel. Right. It's all exactly. like self-tape stuff now. So how, how are you coping like auditioning yeah. and stuff like that these days? Yeah, the self-taping is it's not my thing. I, I had, but I had to stop telling myself it wasn't my right. thing because then you go in going, it's not my thing. And so <laughs> that may read, and I already have enough expression in my face. So it would read. So I've just started going in like, I, you know, I love this. I, I can control it. But yeah. I think if I was doing it, which I may start doing like in a more personable space, like with a friend, I, I have a lot of people who have their places set up for it and they're really good in technology with it. Um, so one of my actor friends, I'll probably meet at his place. Right. Um, sometimes when you do it in the studio, you're on a time thing. And then, if you don't know the reader, you, you know, it, it just, even though I've been going to a particular place, but um, this recent one was just, I, I tell people, I said, oh, that audition took life out of me. <laughs> it, it did just because it was kind of heavy, great character role, but it was kind of heavy, but right. fun. 
And it was just so much. And uh, yeah, so, but this particular interview that I did on Zoom, it was more of an interviewing process because they're looking for like experts. Okay. So think of like um, Queer Eye, you yeah. know, like we have all these experts, whether it's a life coach or this or this, it was more of that. So they were doing like, you weren't auditioning, doing a character, but you're being yourself. Right. So it was intense. It was fun. It was intense too, but just trying to get your place all set up. So I'm such an in-person, personable yeah, kind of individual because I think that's when I flourish, you know? Yeah. And like when, when you have that sort of style of personality, you want that to come across, you know, to yeah. the people, you know? So yeah, I much prefer sure. being in the room. My thing is with like the self tapes, yeah, I'm never happy with it. So I'll always redo it. And it just takes ages. Like it just takes forever ages. to get it done, you know? Ages. Like literally one day, I think I went and said, I'm just going to go make a hot toddy and <laughs> then, then continue because I was getting so worked up. <laughs> right. I was getting so worked up. I had to take a break. And like I said, fire trucks are normally quiet. This particular time I was doing it, fire trucks were going everywhere. Like, of course. <laughs> so let me step away, just relax, make a hot toddy. And you know, the emphasis on the hot toddy is the, the spirit right <laughs> is mixed in there <laughs> to help my spirit yeah it might change the audition a little bit though you know I mean? yeah it was great then then i thrived i thrived <laughs> that's all that matters <laughs> if you've got the final product <laughs> that's fine um well yeah so i got in touch with you through twitter and like we were dming back and forth and stuff like that and then i was at the, i was at the shops you know the other week or whatever and you Reply to my message, and it was just strange getting a, a message from the mum from Keenan and Kel whilst I was doing <laughs> the shop. You know, like it was just yeah. a strange, surreal moment for me. Um, and I, I was going to ask you kind of about like your 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 time on the show and stuff. But I feel like it's such a big sort of time frame for you, and it's like it was there was so many episodes. Obviously, um, how did you end up with that 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 role on on Keenan and Kel, not just as a main role, but as his mum? <laughs> you know, it's quite oh, a big, yeah, big just, deal. Just no, you know, just another day in the world of an actor, you yeah. know, auditioned for it. Uh, that particular role, I remember getting the audition and I didn't even really know what it was for. Okay. So I kind of went in blind. And ever since then, I always say, um, uh, I kind of like not having all the details because sometimes I think, you know, just, just showing up and doing the work and going for it can, yeah. can also help. Right. Um, yeah, so it was a regular audition, but I didn't have many details until I got there. And when casting was telling me about, oh, there's these two guys, they're from the show, all that. All on the that, yeah. And I literally was like, my eyes were so big. I was like, yeah, <laughs> because let's back up. Prior to that, I had been watching all that because my daughter was real young at the time. So, you know, I'm home still auditioning but you know in the stay at home stay at home mom role at the same time yeah and i'm thinking i was calling people literally saying wait there's a show on nickelodeon called all that it's like a you know team cast of saturday night live saturday night live yeah and i was like these kids are literally talented like they're incredible and then i said this but there's these two black guys that are just off the chart extreme like, like i was just chemistry like, just like perfect yeah the chemistry and then i even said oh my goodness i would love to work with them one day wow like i said that so that was just a few weeks before i actually went in for the audition so it was crazy so when i went in so i was already like uh-huh uh-huh and they <laughs> said so the two guys keenan and kale i'm like yeah 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 they said um, they're getting their own show called the Keenan and Kale show. I was like, and we're looking for the mom. I was like, OMG. Yeah. And I said, okay, this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. So the casting was like, oh, you're so funny. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not <laughs> even trying to be funny. I'm actually right. being serious. This is mine. And I was like, you want to understand me? And they still kept laughing at me like, oh my God, you are so funny. And I'm almost in tears because I'm like, I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> please I mean, take me seriously. Like, I was like, please take me serious and yeah. send everyone home because this is mine. And all I thought about, so I'm a big I Love Lucy fan. Okay. To where 
people would call me and I would say, what am I doing right now? I, I would answer the phone and say, what do you think I'm doing right now? <laughs> I was so horrible. They were like, oh my God, you're watching Lucy. But I was like every single back to back episode. That's when it would come yeah. on back to back to back. I was like, you know, that's what I'm doing. So why are you calling? <laughs> you know, I got to watch all episodes. Like I couldn't get enough of her. So I remembered this one scene where she's trying to get a job at this office. And, you know, Lucy barely had experience in anything. Right. And so like work related. Right. Um, so she starts telling a lie to all the other people who are in there for the interview. Yeah. Like because she wanted to be the, the only one left in the room. So he <laughs> would have to pick her. That's literally what I thought about. Yeah. You're only saying manifesting it. <laughs> Yes, I need to tell everybody something so I could be the only person in the room. And like Lucy literally goes like, oh, he doesn't like a person with gray, a gray skirt. And the person was like, oh, my God, thank you. And run out to go find some other clothes. So she kept getting rid of, rid of everyone until she was the only one left. So I thought about that. The interviewing process was quick. Right. I mean, it was quick. Um, but I landed it, I think, three auditions later. I took all the notes from the producers um, when it was up between me and the, uh, one other person. It was some great talent in there. But let me tell you, I just was like, oh, you all may be too expensive because <laughs> it, like, I, I went up against some heavyweights. I'm not going to lie. OK. And they had come from series. I was like, oh, you're going to be too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they probably were like, yeah, Tim won't be as expensive. No, so that's just, not that's not it at all. You were clearly the best one for the job. I look whatever it took, yeah, you know, because right. when you're, you know, because I think as actors too, you go through that. Am I qualified for this? This is a series. Yeah, I had never done a series. You, you got to remember too. I for me, I kind of fell into the business. Okay? okay, so this wasn't someone who was growing up studying. I mean. The other cast members, this is what they did, yeah. you know, including my TV daughter, who was, you know, the youngest, you know, for me, I started off in broadcasting. I thought I was going to be a journalist, but then I, I'm so opinionated yeah. and I editorialize everything. I was like, I'll never make it. They'll fire me because okay. I read a story and I go, this is so stupid. Yeah. And I would have an opinion about every story. So I was, um, but I still wanted to be in some aspect of media. Right. So part of you, you're also saying, oh, am I qualified for this? Because it's kind, of, kind of like the devil will always be in your ear going, why you? You're not qualified. I'll and I you. remember just really praying, praying so hard to where I call it the bathtub testimony. I remember bathing and crying <laughs> and literally hitting the water like, just take it away if it's not for me. And um and I was getting the call for the second callback while I was crying. Oh, really? And praying. And then I checked the messages later. And my agent was like, I hope you're around because you're going back in. No, it was the third callback. It was like, you're going wow. back in. And it's literally between. That's what she said, literally. I know I use literally a lot. I love literally. Yeah. But she goes, um, it's between you and, and one other person. And I pulled it together. And... I felt it in my soul. I wanted it. We were going to shoot the pilot like right before Christmas. And I was like, this would be a great Christmas present. And of yeah. course, when I got it and I told the producers that and my, and my agent said, oh, by the way, she the, the way she even gave me the news, she kind of, you know, like dangled it. And then she eventually said, well, Merry Christmas. They wanted me to tell you, you got it. Wow. Yeah, and then you still go and shoot the pilot. And then this is what you say. Ken Foray, the actor who played my husband, is like, yep. you know they could replace us? <laughs> <laughs> you can shoot the Like, I was like, it's never ending. Yeah. You have a job and don't know if you're going to have a job. It's How never... long are you going to be doing it for? Yeah. Yeah. But we were determined to nail it. We made a pact with each other because the boys, uh, the men, the young men, Keenan and Cal, were yeah. so good. And so used to each other's timing. Right. Um, they just played off of one another so well. My husband and I were like, we have to get together every night and run lines and do this because we have to keep up. Like yeah. they were sharp, you know? 
So something to say about young actors. I, I think they have something else in them. There's definitely some genius there for sure. Right. For sure. Yeah. Um, but it was a great experience. Great ride. You know, we're yeah. still all in touch. <laughs> oh, really? That's great. Yeah. I was going to ask. I was like, do you still speak to them? Like, I was, you, you seemed like a really tight family, like on screen. Yeah. So, you know, I must have come across in real life too, you know? Yeah. And, and sometimes not always, but like, we could DM each other or talk to each other, or reach out at any moment. And right. we're still talking. I'm with my TV daughter the most. Cool. Um, Kyra. Yes. Vanessa Bagan Kelly, who's <laughs> killing the entertainment game. She's doing amazing on um, behind the scenes as a producer and writer. Cool. Um, she's creative. She's doing amazing and still acting, but that's her main thing right now as well and she's I'm so proud of her so we're always together um and we all just have a, a good time kel and i actually were just uh talking speaking uh through instagram actually we we're talking just briefly um they're in touch with my daughter because she was on the set she yeah of course yeah with me so yeah Cool. That's nice to hear that you're all still kind of cool. You know, that's, yes. that's nice to hear. Um, yeah. Do you have a, a favorite episode or a favorite moment that you did? You know, um, every episode was my favorite. <laughs> you have to understand, like going, I don't know if anything will ever compare to that because to show up for work. And of course I had it good being the, the main adult female lead. So there wasn't any going back and forth with anyone else. And not that I, I I'm a pretty easygoing like person anyway, you yeah. know, I, I don't show up for those kind of shenanigans. Um, but other people brought that to my attention. That guest starred on the show. They were like, you have it really great. It's just you, you know? Yeah. So it was fun. It was so much fun every day because I could not believe I was in my lane, obviously, I loved it. First season was a challenge because of course, yeah. we filmed the seasons without it airing first. So you don't know what you look like. You don't know anything. <laughs> you don't know how you're showing up, how your performance is. So you're in that vacuum. But one thing I said after that first season, I said, oh, my goodness, I will never, you know, comment really on, you know, any kind of other situation comedy because when they film like that, you don't know. And then a lot of times just finding that character, it's hard to do in that first season. It's hard yeah. to do. Sitcom goes really fast. It goes yeah. really fast. So it takes a minute to get your beat, to get your character, to find your footing, all of that. Um, but every episode, I'm telling you, it was just such a blessing to be a part of it. We were all so close it was a blessing. And then we just all had our own type of comedy. So it was right. like a comedic fest all the time. You showed up, you know, I even told my daughter who was like four, I was like, girl, you got to get some comedy. You got to be <laughs> able to hang, get your comedy chops going. Yeah. Cause you I mean, know, that's I, I, when she was probably missing teeth too. I said, they're going to talk about you. <laughs> Kim and Kel, you know, they're going to talk about you. They'll bring that up. Yeah. I just, I guess from the kind of environment of all that, it's like a Saturday night live kind of show, you know, like you're going to get, the kind of quick, you know, yeah. style of comedy and stuff. And the fact that the, the chemistry between everybody was so great just made the episode so fun to watch. I, I should mention, though, the Christmas episode. I don't know if you remember the Christmas one. Um, but that's like, it's one of my favourite Christmas TV specials ever. I watch it oh, wow. like, all the time. They still show over here in, in the UK on TV a bunch of times. Um, and around Christmas time, it's always on. So I'll always I'll always watch it. So that was probably my favourite one. Um and and you know the, the the one where the the family are going to move to Montana and Keenan and Kel are being separated. That was separated. a good one. That was oh, a good it was one. so emotional. Like it was not you weren't ready for it at that young age for me. Anyway. <laughs> well, no. Let me okay. Let me tell you this. I do remember the Christmas one, and I do remember my daughter being an extra um, on that one and another one. I think with the with which one was it? Because I remember Keenan always yelling at Talia, saying, "Talia, stop looking into the camera." <laughs> Stop looking at you. Not yelling in a mean way, just reminding right. her, Talia, don't look into the camera. Oh, we had so much fun. I mean, they just, everyone looked out for her. But I remember um, the episode, I believe we were at a restaurant. Now, I'm just going to be honest. We could not stop laughing. So 
when we're at the restaurant, I think that's when the date or something, the sweater went into the pot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. First season. And, and shrank it. Oh, my God. Let me just say this. I think I could be mixing episodes. I don't know. All I know is we're sitting having dinner. And we I am laughing so hard because, first of all, I couldn't understand how Kel could play that role so well. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He's not that person, you know. Right. So for him to go into that role, so so committed, I could not believe it. So I had to, I, we were laughing so hard that I finally had to ask, like, our director, okay, let me make sure the camera is not on me. Okay. Because when he was doing the lines, I was crying <laughs> because Loki was so stupid. Like, I was looking at him like, you are so stupid like in a silly fun way like how are you so committed and then if he put extra on it you know yeah it was crying they had to like okay you guys <laughs> i was like just get through this line let me get through my line because right. i can't i gotta finish this scene so we had so much fun doing that and so many times and then sometimes we're laughing at each other maybe the way you're saying a line or yeah. if you can't remember it, and it is a simple line. So Keenan and I would always be in each other's ear going like stuff like, look, 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 look at him, look, look, what? You know, I mean, we always had this yeah. side chatter, always. That's so funny. That's so funny. And let's just shout out to Keenan. I mean, come on. Listen, I'm going to say it. I always knew the genius in him. I, yeah. Like, so when actors accept their awards, right, it's like Emmys, whatever award an artist is accepting, Oscar, Grammy, all of it. Right. Especially actors, you know how you, they give all this kudos to like your cast members and you're thinking, eh, they were okay. Like, I don't, you know, yeah. but it's when you're working side by side with a person, you then see their genius because there's all of these other little nuances that, the person, the audience doesn't see necessarily yeah. that to even for that actor to get to that point or get to that role or that scene, right? That as castmates, we see. Yeah. And that's when you go, like Keenan would, would be off book. He would be off book by the time we had the round table, like by the time we had rehearsal. I It was to the point that I asked, does Keenan get his script before <laughs> Or everyone else. Do Kenny and Cal get their script first? Yeah. <laughs> no. I was like, and remember, they had way more dialogue than any of us. Of course, yeah. And then you're doing physical comedy. So I was like, how? How do they have all this down so quick? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just gifted. Just gifted, talented. No other way to look at it. Yeah, he's killing it right now, you know? Um, killing it. Just doing so much stuff. It's always good to see them. It's like anyone from I know you know I'm. It was from my childhood or whatever. But it's nice seeing anybody from that period in your your life still succeeding. You know, yeah. um, when I, yeah. I was looking up to these guys, like these are part of the reasons why and yourself, like why I'm I want to be a performer and why I want to be on Aww. stage and stuff. You know, because yeah, of those relationships. You know, you, you see it and you kind of aspire to be like them. You know, right, right. And and let me say this too, like they're both. I think all of us, honestly, were so genuinely down to earth and cool. So I think a lot of it starts with who you are before you even right. show up. You know, I'm from Michigan. I'm going to just say it. You know, uh, Vanessa's from Florida. Keenan, Atlanta. Kel from Chicago. Oh, really? He was from Ken Chicago. Originally is, yeah. And I think Ken Foray is originally also from, um, is he from St. Louis? Oh, we're all from the mid, you know, Midwest yeah. or whatever and South and then just our family values. Like, I think we all came with our own individual um, perspectives of just being grounded. Like we were all very grounded, I believe, just as people. And remember, Kenan and Kel were younger, but they were younger. They were, no, older playing younger. They were playing younger, yeah. But they, but they were still young, you know, they were yeah, still totally. under 18. So they were so smart and so self-aware. Um, 
and it was it was interesting. I love their families. All of them, you know, the the young people on the show had great families. Again, great family values, just all of that. And I think all of that mattered. So it just made for a really um, harmonious time on the set as well. Yeah. Like we all that makes had a big difference, back. right? Yeah. Oh, we had there was no issues, you know, no yeah. real issues that you know that can go on, and, and just being very grateful. You loved all that. <laughs> Sorry, how's that? That's a terrible joke. I loved all that. Terrible joke that led to <laughs> Kenan and Kel. <laughs> Okay, cool. So in terms of this podcast, we're always chatting about cinema and films. Um, and I'm just curious to know your earliest memories about going to the cinema or going to the, the movies. Do you have, you know, early memories of when you were younger, watching films and going to see things? Um, yeah, well, you know, um, definitely younger. Believe it or not, younger, I always loved, even as a young kid, I mean, I loved black and white always. It was just something about it. Right. To where when we had to start taking our headshots in color, I was <laughs> so opposed. I was like, black and white is so sexy. It's so mysterious <laughs> right. almost. So I really loved that. Um, but I remember being caught up in that, like those type of movies. And I mean, you know, color obviously was in, but I was like, Oh, if I had to pick, I would. I was always looking at the old school films and clips. Hmm. Then, of course, as I continued maturing, um, I definitely loved movies. So listen, I wasn't the person that's, oh, I'm going to be an actress. And I wasn't saying that at all. You know, I thought I was going to be like the next Barbara Walters, to be right. honest. But. But I definitely loved documentaries. I remember loving documentaries to this day. That's yeah. if I went behind the lens, that's my thing. I mean, Netflix are just killing it with documentaries these days. The they really so are. Ones. Yeah. They really like I love the story behind the story. Right. That is my thing. But I loved all kinds of genres. I loved, you know, um, I definitely loved horror. You know, I loved horror as a kid. Um, I loved the love stories. I remember watching, for instance, Mahogany. Um, I loved things like Lady Sing the Blues. Um, I still recite lines from that. Like they were just so effective. So I did this play. We were on tour all over called Beauty Shop. And my cast members laughed at me all the time because one of my favorite lines was from Mommy Dearest, of course, No More Wire Hangers. Right. So I was, that movie did something to me. I don't know what. <laughs> like, <laughs> I saw myself as that character. <laughs> Extreme and dramatic. So mm. I loved Mommy Dearest. Um, <laughs> I loved, now my TV daughter used to always mimic the bad seed. You know, I, I loved that movie. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All kinds, yeah. I just whatever appealed to me. Now I'm I'm particular. Look, COVID has messed up everything. So right. you know, you're barely going to movies and then you're just trying to stay alive. I mean, I don't <laughs> even know what's been happening in the world. It's like but COVID, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. like and then even my daughter, the fact that she's writing now and will be producing and different things like that, um, pivoting from a pro athlete. Um, just wow. during COVID, she just didn't go in the bubble and, and was, you know, had an opportunity to go, but she came back from over, they got her out of Poland. And um, then it was like once, I think it was April, May was coming around. Um, now it's WNBA season. Are they going to go and do that now? Had an opportunity. She thought about it, thought about it. She had already been writing a lot anyway, did a fabulous article uh new york times asked her to write about kobe okay um and again she was in a situation like me and they were like yeah based on something she had mentioned on twitter and they reached out to her yeah fabulous article so she had always already been doing things but when her journey started just with um i'm gonna just for me to trust her and she's gonna start this writing journey right yeah even some of the things that we were sitting back talking about, like our life and different things that we were going through with COVID, I think 
we started looking at things differently too, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we're now having fun with it all. You know, like yeah. we're, we're all taking a, a breather and going, okay, we can get back into these lanes, right? And when we, when she we were reviewing what she grew up on, even and, and the laughter of different things and the weirdness of things that she likes, we were watching the mat. Like the mask was a regular. <laughs> the mat, like yeah. the mask was a regular. I can't think of the other film that we talked about, but she was like, oh, in Dumb and Dumber, of course, classic. Like, she yeah. was like the fact that she said, I remember you were trying to get me to watch. Um, let's say a Disney movie. And she was like, no, I want to watch the mask. And like she was watching those kind of quirky, weird co comedy. Yeah. Young. Did you, did you show her good burger? Come on now. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, of course. You know, remember she was a part of the set. Right. Of course. Of course. She was a part of all of that. So she, yeah. So it's, it's Love that. I shouldn't be shocked that she's where she is now or, or just, wanting to to do that she's um just finished her first year at the prestigious starks school of producing wow. at usc so um but she's already working in the biz too she's doing wonderful and i'm like yeah do behind the scenes because that's where it's at <laughs> because i definitely too i see myself that like i can i have in my opinion in my opinion i think i have mad vision like my vision is 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 there like I'm yeah I'm a creative for sure you know but you know with me and, and I nurture her a lot in this or any other person um especially millennials or whatever because yeah. as a mature adult now you can look back and see where life sometimes gets in the way and if you don't have someone helping you stay on that path in spite of life getting in the way right you you can lose some time so I like to look at my pivot you know, I got married around our last season, focused on my marriage and we were doing, you know, going to go into business together and different things like that. My husband died tragically in a boating accident. We were not married long. My daughter was one of the, you know, top recruits in the nation living in L.A. with no family. Wow. Like none. And she was getting such a stellar education. You know, it was like the Harvard of junior high, high school. Yeah. And I, we were going to make it work. We were like, it was like, she's going to stay here. You know, she's thriving. It, she was going into, it happened at the end of her eighth grade year. So she was going into the ninth grade year and she was already, people were asking her then to sign, a, you know, I mean, not to sign, but to give a verbal. So right. the pressure was on, you know? Um, so with that said, I just, for me, I didn't know how to do all of it and be present. For all of it. I could do it all, but something yeah. was going to miss out. And I just didn't want it to be my daughter. So, so that gap between Keenan and Kel was not because I couldn't get roles or anything. Right. I was auditioning a lot. It was, and getting very close to the next thing, but I, I, I just put my daughter first. Listen, I remember oh. when I came back into the business, which hasn't been that long. And I, on my resume, my it said, um, I'm back. And the casting director, top casting director said, Till, what does that mean? I explained to her what happened. And I love that she said, bravo, never apologize that you took time out to be a mom. And then she said, welcome back. And that was, that did wonders for me. Absolutely. So I don't have to, you know. So now the thing is, now I'm living my best life. I do <laughs> have another career that I enjoy. Yeah. Um, but the media has always been my, my passion, um, whatever genre, you know, I, I love commanding a stage. I love hosting or emceeing. I've yeah. partnered with different people in the past, like Alexandria house where I've been their former ambassador, um, a transition home for people, um, escaping like sex trafficking and things like right. that, or abuse. So I, I, I'm really into like philanthropy things, causes and passions of mine. I'm really into that. But now that I'm back in the industry, I told someone the other day, I don't mind if I'm crawling a little before I walk again. Like I love yeah. it, you know, you need and, to, you know, you, need, you can yeah. go through that. Yeah. And I feel kind of brand new, but it, it, it's nice. 
Um, like I said, I've had, I, I definitely had booked early on right out the gate. So that was fun because when you're ready, you're ready, you know? So right. now I'm just still training. Now I'm formally training. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you kind of just fell into my lap before <laughs> a little bit. Now where we are in the business too, like I said, I love in-person auditions. A lot of times, I don't know, the casting directors and I really connect. Right. Like, I've had some weird things said to me when I've gone in the cat, not weird, like nice, kind things said to me, but yeah. um, yeah. And, and then it makes it fun. It makes it fun when they see you at the core. Right. Yeah. But I'm telling you like the movies that, you know, thank God we have so many mediums right now, you know, crazy. Thank, it's crazy. Thank God for that. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, let's talk about Jordan Peele. So, <laughs> Still, look at that. Look at that segue. You, you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Jordan Peele. So now that's the man of the, of not just the hour of the times, you know, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to work with him. OMG. Um, so I did just see Nope. All right. And... I've not seen, I've not seen it. It's not out here yet. So, okay. No so spoilers. I'm not going to say anything. Loved it. There's a lot of controversy on it. I know different okay. things. It's not gonna. It's not a get out. It's not a get out. Okay. But you know, get out in terms of current times. Like like I said, going back to uh, feeling safe now to go back in the movies, but even pre COVID, like seeing Get Out was just. And I know we were gonna talk about Get Out, but I told you before we started doing the podcast, like I couldn't watch it again though. Yeah. I could like I was gonna watch it again just to go over some things, but I was like, there's no way I can. It's Yeah. That movie was did you did you see it? Yeah, yeah. See, I saw it at the time when it came out and then I watched it the other night. Yeah. Okay. It was so deep and so meaningful. And I like the way he did his messages mm. with the messages and the tones within this entire movie was incredible and yeah. none of us want to go to the sunken place none of us <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Like, that would we be didn't bring that term back like in the, when the movie first came out we were all talking about the sunken <laughs> place we still need to talk about the sunken place it sounds like something that should be in stranger things this yes. the shrunken place um yeah when i first saw it get out i was like i've never seen a movie like this before I feel like it did have a little bit of a change because it felt as if they merged a lot of genres together. Like it wasn't just a horror. It wasn't just a mystery. It wasn't just a thriller. There was a bit of adventure in there. There was some comedy. There was lots of stuff in there. And I really think that really helped the film. Um, and when I asked you to pick a film, you know, you gave me a, a bunch of great options and stuff. Um, and the reason I chose Get Out is because I'm, you know, somewhat familiar with it. Why Why do you love the film so much? Why was it something that when you saw it, you were like, okay, this is something that really um, moved me and kind of changed the way I was thinking? Because of the truth um, in between the lines, you know? Yeah. The, the look, the overt truth, <laughs> <laughs> the subtle truth, um, the fact that you had to walk away and go, let me go think about this. Right. I love anything that now some things are what, you know, are what they are legally blonde. Right. One of my favorites, right? <laughs> it's one of my favorites, but it is what it is. Right. Right. Exactly. You put it on okay. when you need, you know, a cheer up or whatever. Yeah. But then you have a film like Get Out that makes you sit back and kind of do some self-awareness. So, I mean, every time he went in that, when he was in the, that chair yeah, and having that session and, and mom is doing the tea, I knew right away when she was stirring and that hit that spoon hitting, I, I knew it was a thing. Yeah. I knew it was a thing. Um, I did not know right away that the daughter was involved. Yeah, that was a big twist. Yeah. Yeah. Good plot twist. But of course, it started leading up to that. And I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. Right. And, you know, just address it. The elephant in the room. Like. That's, you know, being on this plantation like that they were on. Yeah. You know, and wanting to have like still not having enough right you know it's like that whole 
that mindset. I have everything, but it's not enough until right. I take your soul. Till I take the spirit of you, your the soul of you. That's problematic because the reality is that's where we are. That's life. Not, that's current. That's real. Yeah. There are people and parties who are not happy in classes and races, all that, that are not happy until they rob, steal, destroy your soul, if possible. Yeah. And just your whole spirit of who you are. Right. And I think for me after, so when COVID hit and everything with George Floyd, the biggest right. thing with me was where are you now? What, where is your stance now? So I think I show up differently. I was like this young. I was like this young in terms of always speaking up uh, for, for an injustice. Yeah. You know, but as life goes by, first of all, my parents used to be petrified. They were like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> and I was that person like, oh, if I have to die for the rights, you know, I was that person. Yeah. Like I was determined to be Passionate. like the next, you know, king or whatever. And um, but then, like I said, life goes by. And then here's the thing when you're not if you're not with people still with the, your mindset, you can change. If and then like becoming a mother, yeah, you pull back. But my daughter, who I, you know, is just woke on so many levels as well. You know um, what I've learned through her and and her life and her journey and her her friend group, her tribe, and then just how things affected me. So even from Ferguson, um, you know, you look at it through a different lens now. Yeah. So even when I'm auditioning, I show up differently. Yeah. You know, just making no apologies. And sometimes I still see, even in that, where as a Black actress, what they are still, what they think they know for a Black actor. And right. it literally drives me crazy. You know, um, putting us still in boxes, you right. know. Rating for you and things like that. Right. Um, not seeing who we are in our complete fullness and greatness right. and all of that. It, 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 it's a problem. And even though there are people trying to change those narratives and I applaud them. So when Jordan Peele did get out, I just thought, Ooh, fire truck. I just thought <laughs> the, bra <laughs> the bravery of it. Um, and the, the hope that I know the audience, especially non-people of color would do some self-awareness and some introspect, you know, bottom line. Absolutely. And it made me and, and all my friends kind of sit up and take notice and be like, wow, like, although we know this is a, a story written by Jordan Peele, you know, it's a very, very real message that he's trying to get across, you know, and I think film is such a powerful way to do that. You know, you can write fictional things, but you know, these things come from, you know, real reality and life, you know, and right. I, that was the biggest thing I took away from it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, and everything had this distinct meaning, you know, um, from, you know, the deer in the beginning, like we deer, all were like, yeah. okay, what does that mean? Like put a pen in that, you know, um, ev everything, everything had a meaning. Um, the way the person was running the, um, one of the groundskeeper, the running yeah. everything. That's when it was like, oh my God, again, they are trying to steal your soul. It's like this person. Yeah. I run fast, but I don't run fast enough. You yeah. know, yeah. um, it's or, kind of or, like that. Or there's the moment where, where he goes upstairs and everybody downstairs stops a conversation to listen because he's now left the room and they all hear him upstairs and stuff like that. Yes. Always, always kind of being on top of you and always trying to listen to you, you know? Right, right. It, 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 exactly. Just all in your space, figuring you out. Yeah. Um, it's almost like you needed permission to be who you are. You know what I mean? Right. And I mean, and I'm even careful now that, that I don't turn to someone and, you know, say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a life we live there, right? Right, because you're so on alert, I feel, in this day and age. And I try to woo side. I try to just be like, just be present and enjoy. And I have friends from all backgrounds. Yeah. All uh, races, you know, and culture. So I get it. But, and we can have these conversations, but Get Out was one of those movies you needed to 
either sometimes watch again yep. and really dissect it. You know, watch the first time for the enjoyment. The second time, let me go back and and pick up what he's telling me right now. Yeah. What I need to look at, you know. Yeah. I am um, I love the performance of Daniel Kaluuya as the as the lead. I think he's he's just incredible. And his American accent is just impeccable in this as well because he's so British. <laughs> I don't know if you've yes. seen him on, on like talk shows and stuff, but he's hilarious. Yes. And he's immediately, you know, from this film and then seeing him on talk shows and things like that, he's totally become one of my favorite like actors and personalities and stuff just because of that commitment to the to the character and stuff. So um again, I've not seen Nope, but I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him in that. I'm assuming he's he's really good. Well, what he's definitely good at, and it's funny because Jordan Peele was being interviewed by Gail King and and he mentioned this. And I had said it as well while we were in the movie. My daughter and I, I said, he has the best performance just without words. He is the best performer (laughs) without words. He literally, you can just, his eyes, his yeah. expression, it says it all, you know, which I'm trying to be like him. Like, let me just be more deadpan, sort of say, because one of my acting coaches once, you know, I was like, oh my God, I have so much expression on my face. I may need Botox. <laughs> and of course I'm kidding. I was like, I need, may need Botox and just freeze it. Because she kept saying, Teal, you're raising your eyebrow. I kept saying, no, I'm not. She was like, yes, you are. And then I did it. She said, you did it again. I felt nothing. I said, oh my goodness, I probably have to get Botox. And she was like, oh my God, you probably will. And I was (laughs) like, I was kidding. But yes, there's so much expression. So I look when I'm watching him, I'm like, oh, I like the way he just, it's all right. It's frozen. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's not saying anything, but so much is being said. Yeah. And then, and then, and the hypnosis scene where it's all kind of coming out. You know, the tears are streaming and stuff like that. You see kind of behind his eyes a little bit. And oh. um, it's a really spooky scene, actually, when she's getting in his head, you know? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely. So kudos to, to Jordan Peele for Nope is definitely different. It's, okay. you know, a different departure. But he talks about why, you know, and I think so many people are, you know, he's not, Jordan Peele is not going to let you put him in a box. Right. You know, he loves sci-fi. He loves horror. He loves all these different mediums of of uh, film and the genres. And he he like he said, he is doing what he wants to see or what he would, you know, hope to see um, that no one's doing maybe yeah. or something different. He, he look like I said, he's the man of life. He's he's genius. He gets all my coins. Yeah. Did you see the, the film after that? Us. Did you see that one? No, no. That I thought that one was scarier. That was really spooky. Um, and I would, I would recommend that one. <laughs> That's a good one. I, I think there was a reason I didn't, but I know I need to. Again, a sister can only take so much scare, and I right. love scary movies. But I'm telling you, I wanted to even delve deeper about Get Out, and I knew it was going to be more general. I was like, I cannot watch this movie again, especially by myself. I was like, yeah. I didn't watch it again. But I still know the scenes. Yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. the scenes that just, and the message, of course, that, you know, stood out to me. But um, especially just everyone being controlled. Right. Captured and controlled. So it was like modern day slavery all over again. <laughs> oh, right. Right, Which yeah. Which is scary. And, you know, I did mention another favorite of mine. I was going to say, yeah. What, what are some other favorite films? Oh, you Brown Sugar. Tell us why. <laughs> and I can specifically, again, tell you why that one. It reminded me, too, of, I think, my growing up with friends and friends that I'm, you know, distant from now for just time and living in different places yeah but i remember but it still gave me that feel good feeling of when you when you and someone else were so down for it all you know when you were just so in the trenches right together and i have a relationship with my daughter like that like as she would grow up i'd always say cradle to the grave cradle to the grave you know we're so connected in that way 
So I love that they were, that they just supported each other in their careers, but yet and still they really didn't know, I guess, how they came together for the love of hip hop, remembering where they were, going into their dreams, and it reminds us as actors, coming back together, respecting where each other, where they are at the time, and just the innocence between them, even though they were both building on these other relationships to have with other people, like, you know, getting married to other people, but it was something still about them that was unbreakable. Yeah. And that, you know, and I love that. And I've had that. I, I've had that where, where you can, which was weird. I'm going to say this now. Like I remember just even being married, but then one of my friends, he was gay, but, but we were so, I, I say that just because he wasn't interested in me in that type of relationship. So I only <laughs> make that disclaimer because of that. But we were so close. I still felt like I could tell him things because he was an actor as well. Okay. That um, it's not that I couldn't tell my husband. I could tell my husband anything, but my friend like could get it. It's like a different relationship, right? It's a, it totally different. I'll give an example. When he saw one of the episodes of Ken and Kel, he called me and was like, Till, he always was like, baby. He would talk like that. Baby, <laughs> you killed it in that scene. He, and then he gave me every step. So he told me why I killed it too. Not just, oh, you did a good performance. He right. was like, Till, you literally like stood up or like picked up your cup of coffee, stood up, grabbed your daughter, brought her, my TV daughter, brought her over to you, touched her hair, lifted up her face. You gave her a kiss on the cheek and you did it all in one beat. He said, you did it in one beat. He said, I was watching that and I was like, you better go to, you better do that <laughs> in one beat. He would, under, my, my husband was in the industry. He would understand that. So right. you feel this, I, not only do you get it, you get me, right? Nice, yeah. And I, oh my goodness, I loved it. I loved it. So, it, and that's what, um, that's what the movie does for me. It's Brown Sugar is that it, it it's black love at its best, black, black friendship. Um, it's how we show up for one another. It's them taking something that was innocent, then it got a little complicated, then they uncomplicated it. You know, <laughs> by then ending up together and realizing this is you and I. We fell in love with hip hop. We are hip hop. We are hip hop. You know, and my yeah. boy used to say if he was interested in me, we probably would it would have been together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah, so it just um it's one of those films that just kind of it's like a comfort film, kind of transports you a there. A comfort film. And because you're dealing in creativity again, right. you're, you know, you're looking at your life because I think the biggest thing with us as entertainers, as creatives, is having someone who gets you. The worst thing is when no one gets you. Right. So I frustrating. Think, right? I, I, <laughs> I think times are a little different now. I don't know. Social media maybe kind of gives you an impression of someone, of you know. Media, so, okay, so there's more people you can lean into. People can lean into each other and support. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when I'm trying to do certain things, you you still had that pushback of, you better get that 401k and have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean... All the all the films that you sent me, I was like, I, I've not seen, I've not seen Brown Sugar, so that's one that I should definitely check out. But um, what what are some of the other ones? What are some of your other favorite movies that you you love to watch? Well, that could I, be I did mention, of from? course, Steel Magnolias is yeah. a winner. Um, I love going way back, The Shining. Oh yeah, and, we should. And, yeah, and that's Jordan Peele has taken a lot from that type of movie. Yeah. Woo! Oh, the did Shining. you see? Did you see Doctor Sleep that came out a few years ago? Oh my God, no! That that was like a. <sighs> spiritual kind of sequel to The Shining where okay. it was it was Ewan McGregor and he plays the young boy from The Shining and he goes mm -hmm. back to the hotel so it's not like you know The Shining 2 or anything like that it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. 
but it's like in reference to that and there's so many like throwbacks and stuff so i i'd, I'd recommend uh dr Sleep. okay yeah okay like no shining. that sounds good yeah um oh wow yeah the shining and then of course pretty woman my mom's favorite film gotta have you know why pretty woman i think does it for a lot of people because everyone well first of all we all love that oh i'm being rescued you know right back then for the times <laughs> like oh, rescue me whoever it is you know yeah but also her her spirit of being this kind of timid person and gentle but then how she got a little bossed up too at the same time and of course everyone's favorite line is when she was disrespected in beverly hills trying to buy something goes back in there and lets her know weren't you the woman who was trying to help me and you didn't because basically felt like i didn't qualify you yeah. know and then she says oh and you get commission too right yeah oh big mistake huge you know so i, <laughs> I told you i love when i can remember the lines to something yeah like, it's those lines you take away, right? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Mean something okay. to you. <laughs> no different than training day with Denzel. King Kong ain't got nothing on me. <laughs> that was the line of life. Yes. And how many times, and it's funny because if you put everything into perspective now, a lot of this is about self-worth. Right. A, a lot of this is about, oh, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. And then, of course, like with Get Out, the whole... um I am just as good as you, even with my black skin, if not better, deal with it. Don't just take it from me. Don't take my life. Don't take my soul. You know, just right. deal with it. So they like the movies I feel like I've picked have all been with well, that kind of you. Yeah. underlining message at the end of the day, um, including, you know, uh, with, with Sanante Diggs and Brown Sugar. It's the same thing about love, you know, like be careful. You know, that best friend is truly, possibly your life partner. Right. Beyond yeah. a friendship. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah I mean, so some, some great choices. So much, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's so much. Like, certain things I couldn't think of current because, of, like I said, it was, it's been COVID. And even though a lot of people were, like, watching movies, I don't know. What was I doing? Um, it was just went by so quickly, didn't it? It was so crazy. We were trying to stay alive. My daughter and I were running uh, Echo Park all the time just to keep ourselves outdoors yeah. and healthy. Um, doing other philanthropy work. We were taking care of mainly her uh, other houseless people within Echo Park. So we were, we, we kind of like were, you know, trying to extend ourselves to others to have a healthy life. Yeah. while we all were trying to navigate navigate through COVID. And then you were just, whatever you were watching, you were trying to watch something really, really happy, right? Yeah, it's going to take you away from, oh, yeah. Right. And another actress friend of mine, um, thank goodness for her, we had Zoom happy hours. Yeah, love it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, little things like that that were helping us get through. And then whatever movies, yeah, you just caught. I mean, I know there's so many more I'm probably missing that I, I loved. Um, yeah, it's such a hard question, though, isn't it? Like talking about your favorite film. You know, I always say it's the second hardest question. The first one being, what's your favorite food? That's the hardest one. Uh, it, it, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But um, overall, though, I love when when there are recommendations for certain things to watch and and i do try to lean into that and see what my takeaway is um it's funny i was watching also the films that this is my thing the films that were on say i i wish i pulled it up uh the food culture okay nice <laughs> because i'm that organic non-gmo more <laughs> plant-based individual yeah. I wasn't even watching those films and getting scared out of my mind. Stuff that I've always known, but then it yeah. was front and center. Again, the documentaries, like, I can live with that, right? Yeah. And send, like, I remember sending it to my niece, like, you got to watch this. I told her to watch it. And my niece was like, absolutely not. I was like, but you got to watch it. Abs she was like, absolutely not. You know? That's, that's fair enough. I think a lot of people were, were kind of doing that in lockdown. You know, they were finding these 
kind of weird things that they were into and binging a lot of shows and going back then, like Disney Plus became a thing, you know, and then like everybody was watching shows from their childhood, you know, just because they yeah. could now, you know. So it was a strange, strange time. Yeah, but I'm, I'm like, I'm glad. Listen, I'm glad you reached out to me because I do get requests. I look, I have to so be better. I have people that say to me, "Till I know you, you're private in your own way." Like, you know, if I meet somebody, I'm very personable and open, yeah. but, um. I'm trying to get better with social media. It's tough. You know, it's tough. I'm trying to get better. Yeah. I get weird DMs. I delete. Um, yeah. yeah. And I, I can appreciate people though appreciating the show for sure. You know, and when I even had to respond to you, I was like, let me respond. This is ridiculous. I even told myself, this is ridiculous too. No, I mean, right away. I just felt, you know, I was very lucky that you did respond, you know, and thank you for, you know, coming on the show. It's such a big, a big deal for me to have you. And I'd love to have you back if you want to talk about one of the other films and, you know, in yeah, more detail, definitely. you know, that we chat about. Um, yeah, what, what, definitely. What else is coming up this year for you? What, what else have you got coming up in, in 2022? Well, like I said, um, so this other career that I've been doing, which is nice. So it's kind of like, so before I decided to go back in the business, after all the tragedy, then focusing on my daughter, then I had to ask myself, do I have the stamina? You know, like right. meaning, do I even want to, you know, go through the ropes? You know how it is, the industry is. Yeah. Um, And I still didn't want to do this. So I was like, okay, you know, but in the meantime, I had been uh, dabbling in some other work. I'd always done some consulting and life coaching type of thing. But then I got more involved thanks to some friends of mine who had a, a child with a disability okay. who actually succumbed through their from their disabilities and different things. But I started getting more involved with kids on the spectrum. Yeah. But here's what's so interesting about that. So because I was doing social skills, like it's it's like doing and mixing it with behavior to have more appropriate behavior. It was like acting all over again. So yeah. then when I would be in class, I'm like, oh, and they're like repetition, repetition. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And like everything became full circle. This is what I'm doing with my kiddos. Right. right? So it's kind of like doing that. But now because I have so many parents talk to me about some, some other things they'd like to, to see happen with the autism community. So there's a, a friend of mine who she's Miss California, actually, who we're, we are doing a podcast together or will be nice. And it's more for the uh, autism community. Um, so a lot of parents do not know I come from the industry. Right. But they were always like, why is she so good? And oh, all yeah. these performances, like, like I write out scripts for the kids, they perform it, but I mix their behavior within the script. Yes. Okay. Got you. And sometimes their behavior was changing positively because when they helped write their script out, they saw what they did. They were able to read about what they did and they were like, oh, it's like a late bulb. I don't moment. like that. So one kid said, I want to change that. Change the dialogue. What's your next line going to be? So instead of yelling at his teacher, for instance, he wanted to say, well, I said, well, let's keep that action in there of what, you, of, of what happened because it's the truth. But what can you say next? Whereas before the kid may have said, I'm not going to apologize. I don't care about that teacher or whatever or that person. They wanted to change their narrative. So now it's like, I went back and said, I'm sorry, and I appreciate them. So, yeah. So that's that, great. That is something that's been close to me. Um, yes, that's been something that's been close. But now I want to expand that more um, to get even closer to who I really am and my authentic self. And that is through a po podcast talking about the community, empowering parents, because that's where I see where there's a void to help empower the parents on how to keep their kids motivated and different things like that. But right now I'm up for a couple of projects um, that I'm excited about. We'll see what happens. I'm in that audition game. We'll see what happens. Yeah. There was a lot going on before COVID, then it all shut down. Oh man, yeah. 
so crawling back. Like I said, I just had an audition not too long ago that took literally took life out of me. So, <laughs> but I'm still standing. I'm still strong. Yeah, you're starting um, to like second guess your return to the industry. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm still standing. What Antoine with Antoine Fisher? I'm still standing. I'm still strong. So, yeah, um, that's why I like seeing what Cal is doing here. He's a uh, right. in ministry now. Wow, really? And yes, he's in ministry. A pastor, man, he's a pastor. But you're still doing all the other things that he's he's doing. You know. Yeah. So, I think this is the time where we. It's okay to do several things that tickle your fancy. Absolutely, and I think it's I think it's encouraged now, you know, to kind of do as much as you can. You know, it kind of builds up that kind of rep that you have on your your CV yeah. or, or or who you are as a person. I would love to have Kel on the show. I don't know if there's any way that you could communicate that to him. I will talk to Kel. I oh, will man. talk to Kel. That would be yes. I mean, even if you wanted to come on the show with him, you know, it, that'd be amazing. But um, if that could be set up, that would be like that'd be a huge deal. So. <laughs> yes. No, I think it, I, I think that will be. Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. I wonder what um, film he'd pick. What's, what's, what's he into? What type of films does he like? Do you know? Oh, I know they would. They would. He would have good films. Um, Comedies, probably. I don't know. Um, I. Because I dissect to a degree, but even people like who played my husband, he really would. Um, yeah. Ken Foray, he's he's really deep into all that, and it would be because he would get mad at me if I didn't know certain things when we were on the set, and I was like, Ken, you have to remember. <laughs> but, but these are people who really got into the business, right? right? Got you, got so you. They yeah. Were, yeah, I kind of fell into it, so I was like, please forgive me if certain things I didn't know, I just wasn't aware of, you know. Yeah. Um, because again, I wasn't looking at my life going in that direction, but very grateful that it did. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so so he would always get a little irritated by me. But <laughs> now you're like, yeah, you got to study the craft and know things and different things like that. And, course, it's all about yeah. who you know and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I I get it, I get it. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's. What, yeah, I yeah. get it. So Kel would be great. Kel, oh, any of the cast members would be great about that. I, if you could, um, any, honestly, any one of the cast. I emailed uh, Dan Frischman, who played Chris. Yeah. I emailed yeah. him. He, he didn't get back to me. I was like, he was one of my favorites because his name was the same as my name because we were both called Chris. Okay, so so I I'm always have to contact Dan. You know, Let I'd me love that. Contact Dan. Yeah. We, we talk as well. Let me, you know. You'll actually like become my agent. I already have an agent here, but you could be my you could be my agent for the podcast. <laughs> I'll be in contact with my agent here, my acting agent, and then we'll put you in touch with you. <laughs> yes, yes. We have to make that happen. Dan is super cool, too. And he was, you know, again, he was all of us, even before a show, praying. How we prayed before a show made a difference. You know, if a person, whoever was their creator, we kept that open. We didn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. But we, for us, it was still just coming together, holding hands before the show, having that moment of silence, acknowledging there was someone greater than us that was bringing all of this together in the universe. We were just so enormously grateful. Yeah. L let me ask you one more question about, about the sure. show. Um, and now I'll let you go. Up. Thanks so much for staying on for, for so sure. long. Um, how was it in, in terms of having the studio audience there? Because obviously, like, you're filming a TV show, and I know that's how it was back in the day, a bit more than it is now, how they would shoot sitcoms like that, like Friends or, or whatever. Um, but in terms of doing the, the, the show in, in a number of ways, how did you find performing not only for, you know, the screen, but also you have to kind of open yourself up to the audience like you would do on stage, you know? You know, it, it, see, again, not knowing a lot, Sometimes that's why I said it's nice to be a little green sometimes. Right. Now, you just kind of be there for the right. Yeah. So I knew to how to, to open for camera and, and I yeah. understood blocking and all that. You know, all of us did for the most part. But just doing stage two in front of a live audience, I loved it. You know, yeah, I you was that instant feedback. In of, yeah, 4,000. Like our houses were nothing under 3,000. Wow. So I was used to performing in big houses and different things like that and performing big, right? Like, my drama teacher always always say projection is my life and project all the way for the person in the last row in the back, right. right? So I was used to all that. Matter of fact, some of my issues now where I've had to practice being so toned. Bring it down. Yeah. That's bring my it problem. Down <laughs> because again, Keenan and Kel, that slapstick kind of over the top comedy, number one, in front of a live audience, 
than I do or had been doing, you know, motivational speaking with that risk. So I'm used to just being animated and big, probably the same way I am now here with you. But <laughs> I'm working on the subtleties. But I think the audience, it, it was great. It helps you stay on top of your game, right. the feedback, you know. I mean, there were. I remember a time in Florida. Uh, Keenan said, "Hey, everyone, we, yo, you can laugh. We need you to respond. Like, <laughs> we need you, know, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, you know, sometimes it's like they're just so engrossed. You're like, yeah. oh no, you can, you can clap. So it, it was great. You know, the Florida audience was great. When we came back to LA to film the last two seasons, it was great. Yeah. yeah. It's not nothing like being like in front of a live audience, though. You know, it's just like getting that instant kind of like gratification it. and stuff. You know, right. And I think for me, it's not about stardom, but it's a, it's a, it's about being impactful. So right. I've had moments, and that's another conversation for another day. I've had moments where guests came to the show via you know someone else who contacted me and said, "Hey, this family's going through a rough time. They just right. lost their a parent or whatever." can can they come to the show and that happened once and in florida and it just changed everything for me uh real quick an article that and i've been trying to find this article from hector elizondo the actor and he talks about the forging of the sword and i i oh my god it was so powerful this this uh interview he did and I wanted to feel that. I wanted to have more than just this acting experience. Because remember, like, for me, my existence is everything. So it's very important for me just to, as I exist as a human, to be impactful to people, to do my mitzvahs and all of that. Right. Okay. I have a Jewish background. Right. So just to let you know, my great grandmother. So to do mitzvahs and different things, that's important. And so beyond anything else. So I wanted to feel that. I was like, I want more. I, I remember praying for that. And when this family got to come, I chased them. I went outside to find them because um, a friend said, no, your guest left. And I was like, why? I wanted oh, no. to meet them. Yeah. I had never met them. I ran outside the studio through people and everything, found them, blazing heat in Florida, brought them back right. into the studio. Our guest was Ron Harper, Ron Harper, right? Ron, Ron. Oh my God. Yeah. The, from uh, the Chicago Bulls. Yes. I'm getting, see how I get characters confused. I'm like, Ron Harper, right? Was the last name Harper, not Harper, yeah, Ron Harper. from the movie. Uh, <laughs> to kill a mic. Look, I got everybody in different places. Okay. <laughs> you so, did fine. Right. So he was there. I wanted them to meet him. So I brought them back. They met them. They were just so amazed. And the bottom line was, they were like, I can't believe you did this. And I said, what did I do? I didn't do anything. This is nothing. Matter of fact, if I can't do this, then what is this all about, Alfie, right? Right. So the mom literally, you could see, was a, she was about to cry. And the kids, I was talking to the kids, and they were just so grateful to be backstage at my dressing room, meeting everyone, Keenan and Kel, the whole cast, and then Ron. And she said, I'm going to go. We've taken up enough of your time. We haven't taken up time. I just, blessings. I'm glad you made it. She was about to cry. I was about to cry. And then she was like, we're going to leave. We're, they're about to get emotional. Yeah. Been a rough time. She just lost her husband. They were a young couple with these two kids. And I remember going in my dressing room, leaning against the door, holding my heart and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hashem. I now feel the forging of the sword. Wow. And honestly, I want those feelings. Yeah. I want that to be regular. I know someone may say, you don't have to act to do that. I know I do mitzvahs. I try to be that person. But when you, the, the, it's about the platform, like yeah. Muhammad Ali talked about. You know, boxing was that way to have the platform for all the other bigger things. Yeah, become like a household name or whatever, yeah. Right, which was his philanthropy. And, and once he understood the power of media, that's why it was important for him, to, for his talent to elevate on that scale. And that's how I looked at it for me as well. Yeah. Um, 
so I mean that's like life changing sort of things that you're going through, you know. So um, what a way to end the show. Thanks so much for coming on. And uh, you know, you. I, we we contacted through Twitter. So oh, what is your Twitter? I'll get the uh, username. It's just your name, right? How do you pronounce your last name? Is it Marshan? Marshan. Marshan. Yeah, Teo Marshan. Yeah. So on Twitter, if people want to contact you. And, and uh, Instagram, at Instagram as well. Get all yeah. the social medias. You're killing it on social media these days. <laughs> yeah, Kel is on social media. Yeah, we're all on social media. Yeah, I'm sure I'll follow up on you, so I'll I'll try and be in contact. But um, if you, I mean, if you could set something up, that would be that would be I incredible. Put all I know the it's hard. In. I know it's hard. I will put all the effort in. Matter of fact, I'll probably do that once we finish here. Great, because I try to be a woman of my word. <laughs> yes, love that. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Teal, and thank, thank you to everybody. You who was listening and watched this episode of the Good Bit Podcast. Take care of yourselves, everybody, and we'll catch you all down the road.